Oh, I'm fortunate to have uh, to come on stage after Adam because I think he um, he simplified you know, some of the problems we are here to solve. So uh, we are you know excited to be members of the Sony community. Uh, we joined not uh, long ago. Uh, we actually uh, joined the bandwagon pretty late um, because we took the approach of wait and see. <clears throat> there were a lot of initiatives come and going. Um, so you know it's. We're a smaller company, you can't jump on every, uh, every bus that passed by. You don't, you don't know where it's going to take you. Um, if, so we didn't want to do that, so we took approach. But then we started seeing the momentum that uh, Sonic is coming. And grateful for Microsoft, all the work they've been doing. Uh, for those who joined the outreach community or the technical steering committee, you see how much work is going into that. So... Um, what we are here to talk about, and we have some partners in the community like uh, you know Dell and a few others that I cannot mention yet. Um, you know, we are here to solve the problem, but we are also here to enable the opportunity. When Aprit came over here earlier today, you saw the growth in uh, in the enterprise in by 2027. I think with the right tools, that growth will be even faster. More than 60% of the ports that are going into, outside from the manufacturers, from everybody, are going to the access, according to Gartner. So the, the, the edge and the enterprises. So uh, enabling that. Let's see, we have to, all right. Is it uh, showing or? Oh yeah, here, so. I had a different haircut, so. <laughs> so what is the challenge? Well, the challenge is not for you guys. The challenge is probably the ones who are listening in. The challenges for the IT infrastructure, the guys that, uh, you know, seeing the different, you know, version coming and, uh, you know, coming and going and then, you know, getting acquired or whatever. So they don't want this another NOS. Not a lot of people like the previous guys who are here before me getting super excited over looking at CLI. You know, not everybody see, oh, you know, I can write that. You know, for them, it's about being almost invisible. They need to provide a service. They want to do it simple, easy, and they want nobody, they don't want to get the call because nobody calls you as a system, as a, a network engineer and say, you did a good job. No, if you get a call, you have a problem. So, um, you know, we want to help everybody be invisible, do their job, and, you know, and as a, as a network engineer, you know, everything now is driven by networks. So, they ask you to do more in the same amount of time. So what our solution is, is a hyper-automated intent-based networking platform with no need to even interface with the CLI. Now, one thing I want to address before is like people is like, what, you know, everybody's using intent-based networking. What, what do you mean by intent-based networking? It's a good question because even when you put a network with CLI, Obviously, you had your intent. I mean, nobody does in IT things without intent, right? You, you have something in your mind, you work it ahead, and then you put it with commands, a lot of CLI. But let me show you a little video of, uh, in my simple mind, what it means intent based networking. And I've been around too, um, and I love road trips. And the old days, do a road trip across Europe, across the United States, was a lot of preparation work. You know, I spent 10 years in the military, so for me, preparing like the route was a big thing. <clears throat> Measuring, knowing exactly where I'm going to be in every given moment, like at this, and you do a perfect plan. And then you start, and then you realize, well, storm, it's going to progress less. I have some road closures, road delays, and it's always was a big issue. So my intent was to get from point A to point B with the executed plan. It was never that way. And then came Google Maps. You just tell Google Maps where you want to go. It will optimize the trip when you, want, when, you ex when you start it, and then we'll continue to optimize it through the process. So if there are delays or this, we'll route you. So this is, you know, hyper-automation is a key for intent-based networking. Otherwise, it's just what you're doing today. So coming back to Sonic, right? Amazing tool, amazing NOS with all this, uh, you know, Docker containers and all this, but somebody has to do a lot of, you know, coding, a lot of commands, a lot of this. Now, for some of you, that would be wonderful. 
But for a lot of people out there, when I talk to uh, many, many companies, and that's what we want to do, we want to make Sonic accessible. This is scary. You know, you can have Klish, another CLI that makes it Cisco-like interface for Sonic. You can do all of that, but, you know, when, how many guys here open the hood of your car and look at all the components and know the compression ratio of your pistons and how everybody, everything works? Maybe one or two. You just want to drive, and, you know, and that's what uh, this. So we just make it drive, and I like the easy button. But when I listen to all of you guys, I realize it's not easy. It's easier. It's never easy in networking because there's so many moving parts. And, you know, I, like Hedrog was mentioning there, oh, you know, it should work on this uh, pla hardware platform. Should is a good word, right? It should. You know, we talked about uh, different this. Oh, everybody, GNS uh, using, you know, uh, virtualization, all this. It works. GNS3 works. I saw that, you know, but then you realize that when you run it, our actual switches, not so much. So I would call it uh, definitely easier way, not easy. So customers, right, you know, they want to create fabrics. Well, you have two types of creating uh, fabrics. First one is greenfield. Right? You start from nothing, you're lucky, you're building a new data center, you do this, and you can create it in a simple CSV file, JSON, or with our friends, the Dell uh, Fabric Design Center. So you can create that tool, and then you get an output. In the edge, where we beyond edge like to push Sonic more and more, and we have several customers, and you know, if you have questions, I can do that, you get the running config from the, from the switches themselves. We call it a brownfield, why? Because you come in, 60% of the time it will be Cisco, maybe even more, and you, want to ex you don't want to redo the work or everything, you just want to extract the running config from all those switches. And actually, for the first time, tell CIOs what they have in their own network. According to Gartner, 74% of CIOs don't know what they have in their network. I'm sure for some of the CIOs over there, yes, you are part of the 26%. So um, um, our network, agentless, you know, uh, Santil mentioned earlier, we also use uh, um, uh, SSH. The idea is <clears throat> don't touch the hardware. We do that because we're multi-vendor. I cannot install anything on a vendor X and expect a warranty to remain. And it's a constant nightmare, of course, with the, you know, uh, the, uh, the hardware change, et cetera. You just do it in agent list. Work a little bit harder in the be before, but then it helps a lot. Install the VMs, two VMs. You know, we, um, we can install them in the edge. We have some customers using them in AWS. They install the VMs, AWS or Azure. In the, that's in the edge. In data center, zone site, <clears throat> basically simple OVAs. And then... Uh, um, you import those starting point files I mentioned, either the, uh, the greenfield one or the brownfield, and you, you create a digital twin. So your whole network, uh, out of band, overlay, underlay, everything is installed already. One thing is missing, the actual hardware. Once you plug the hardware, the hardware identifier, whether it's a service tag, you know, uh, uh, serial number, etc., will be associated with a configuration. So in this case, you know, you'll see in the demo three, uh, three spines, seven leaves. They wait for their respective uh, configuration. Just a simple metaphor, your mobile devices, right? Your mobile device you are actually a client of the cloud, respective cloud, right? I have an iPhone. I'm actually an iCloud customer where I'm, you know, caching all the certain information on that phone. A lot of my pictures are not even on the phone. They are in the cloud. Similar in this case. Once you plug the hardware, a true ZTP, you know, the switches will come only with only DHCP, get the Sonic, and all of this in auto discovery. Questions how it's done? You'll see a video in a second. Some other key capabilities. I like Apple. I'm sorry. 
Uh, you know, I have friends with Dell. I make a lot of presentations with Dell. You know, I'm big, big fan of their stuff, but I like my Apple. Why? Because I have a time machine. I have a problem. I just go poof, go back to this time, and you know, I have everything configured. We save rolling conf uh, 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 running configs um, at the intervals that you decide, and we store them, JSON files. If there's a problem, you can always go back to that instance and just wipe everything you have and go back to the previous time. We have a customer who had uh, ransomware. He just you know, wiped everything, put the whole new config from a, a safe you know, point at time he had, and uh, help them uh, quickly bounce back from that portion of their problem. Uh, schedule and uh, automated firmware management for part of the out of band, you know, upgrading a sonic version, all of that uh, in an automated way. You can do logical partition of your network, when to update, which version, et cetera. Auto detection of uh, uh, hardware, PoE management also in the same orchestration. You don't have to go anywhere. Uh, you can manage PoE, 802.1x, and LDP on the fabric. So, just uh, to uh, kind of a summary of some of the things, it's graphical. I heard here before, CLI is great. We are network engineers, love it. I get it. But for the other 80% of the population, they don't want to see the CLI. They want it to work. You want a graphical. Most of them don't want to learn the Sonic CLI. They just want to see, hey, I have a problem in my BGP. It turned red. I just hover and tell you, what is this red? Because as human beings, we can absorb a huge amount of data in a finite time when it's graphical. It's just it's our nature. Uh, so it's all graphical, zoomable, basically Google Maps of your network. It's not based on database, it's live. The network constantly inquire itself and recalculate itself. So if you put some, you take something out of port 13 and put it at port 42, it will automatically detect. It gives you accurate information of all your inventory of the network and LDP information of what is connected to the network. You know, so if you're in the edge and you have you know, uh, you know, thousands of Mac devices, you, there's a Mac workbench, you can search that. Uh, we can actually do, show you an LDP of all the devices connected to the network, what they're doing, absorbing information, and uh, show that. It's the network source of truth. Now, I'm sure you heard that before. What does it mean in this case? All configuration targets are done in the orchestration. The network constantly audit itself, and, should, and looking for a delta between the target and the actual. Uh, if it's a read-write, if, there is a DVA, it's, if, if there's a delta between them, it will override the change. So if you wanted the following config and somehow somebody accessed that switch and changed something, it will override the change. And it will do that every few minutes along, like this, it will uh, do that. Uh, if it's a read-only mode, read mode, we will show you the background of that switch will turn brown and say, I have a delta between what you want me to, your intent, and the actuality. And we show you uh, uh, a lot of uh, statistics on everything going on, on a port level, device level, network level, everything is graphical. So um, what it takes to build a network? Right? I mean, like I said, you can do uh, multiple ways. In this case, we show a CSV file, really basic things. We, based on 13 different best practices, create the whole fabric for you. You can go ahead and change and say, I don't like that ASN, uh, AS numbers. I don't, you know, uh, that, but we will assign VNIs, VRFs, everything automatically. So for, you know, some of some you don't like, you know, it's, some would say, oh my goodness, that's terrible. Others will, the majority actually will say, oh, you like it. So here's what, uh, I, you know, a video, I don't, you know, it will, uh, we have a customer who uh, did a, a proof of concept, 10 switches, Dell hardware, um, that uh, three, sp uh, three spines and seven leaves. Um, you know, if ever anybody wants a demo, we can uh, uh, do this after uh, the mini summit. I'll show you how it is. But this, basically, we created a digital twin of this fabric, 10 switches, all the configuration are in the system. One thing is missing is hardware. So what we want to show you, the counter on the top right will show you. 
This is where we started recording it. And basically, the, you could see the controllers are starting getting uh, instituted and start talking. And uh, we'll then later on start talking to the physical um, uh, hardware. So the hardware now gets the configuration from the target. And you start seeing it, oh, you know, green, I start that. If you see that uh, greenish background for the switch, it means it getting provisioning. It's like, hey, I'm getting some updates. And uh, you can see now all of them are white, BGP established. Let's say you don't know anything about um, Sonic, anything about networking, just a guy from the street I pick up right now and say, what do you see? You know, is there a problem? And like, they would say no, right? I mean, you could see the, the fabric is basically fully established and that all within 30 minutes. So to set up the network will probably take, you know, um, 20 minutes, 30 minutes for somebody who knows what they're doing about networking. And then and I rack and stack, this is, you know, out of my uh, realm of expertise, so I don't know how long it will take to rack and stack 10 switches, but then bringing them up another half an hour. So within a, less than a day, you can create a fabric fully operational running Sonic. Um, it's key to, uh, um, to mention that in the world of Edge, migration and multi-vendor is key. Your CFO might will to spend, you know, millions of dollars in data center, but come try to get like, you know, a few thousand dollars for, for the campus. That's a major struggle. So they want to squeeze as much as they can out of equity for that switches. So you will have to have this mi migratory technology to able to that. And, uh, you know, this is us. Any questions? So, so the question is uh, basically on the scale, right? What is, what is the scale that you're targeting your software stack at for? Yeah. We have uh, several PS POCs with uh, hundreds of switches, you know, for data center. But in the edge, we have one network with 4,000 switches in one local air network, 4,000 switches. So scale-wise, we really don't have uh, a limitation uh, because the orchestration platform is one VM. And then you can have one too many approach, and then you have another VM of the control layer that can have uh, uh, that control a few hundred switches, but you can have multiple VMs. So uh, uh, scale wise, is one too many. So we can, uh, you know, I, I don't recommend people to put in 10,000 switches in one data center all in one orchestration, uh, but uh, that's it. By the way, we support MC lag. All the things you talked about, you know, the challenges. We know that tested and tried. We run at the real equipment, so we know some of the challenges that you had. Yes, sir. Uh, let me see if I got the use case right. Uh, so, for example, you're claiming that you can have, for example, a fabric run uh, with Cisco devices, and then you just uh, get one of the Cisco devices out and put a Sonic switch and it will work like automatically. It will work the same. Because as uh, very similar to what uh, Suzy Q does, we have a container in our orchestration that talks the specific language of that switch. So if through LDP, we know it's Cisco, so we, com we write to it, uh, we SSH to it, and then we write CLI commands uh, our orchestration writes the CLI, not you. So um, when you put a command in the orchestration, it will translate into the controller, which will push that into the Cisco. For Sonic, we we'll do GNMI. So same command on the orchestration, send create, you know, uh, BGP, create this, will be funneled throughout and through us, you will, will know to channel them. So that's how you can now. That's how also you can take that Cisco switch later and just say, oh, you know, put in, uh, associate this configuration with a new Sonic device. So once you plug the new Sonic, it will automatically configure it uh, in the way the Cisco. Because you had the running config, we take it, we translate it internally to write it into the, uh, uh, to the Sonic switch. 
asking on behalf of the community what are the most desired and uh, popular scenario for edge that in addition to this management system right i see that oxygen is much needed uh, ui with visual uh, like looking at the data uh, but how about other scenario that you have seen that all when you talk to the customers that the most popular or desired scenarios they are looking for yeah i i think the biggest uh, challenge of Sonic in the edge is actually its uh, enormity or the comprehensive uh, NOS. It's a big one, which means I cannot run it on cheap hardware. So, you know, what Sonic needs to do is to slim down a little bit or, or, or not a little bit, a lot, to make it uh, that. Because what we see in the edge, you also have, you know, you talked about, you know, you do on your fabric only layer three. In the edge, it's, that's not the case. Because especially if you're running a small edge with SD-WAN, you cannot have like layer three from that switch. You need to go through that. So, you know, there's different use cases uh, uh, for the edge, but the edge is the next frontier, right? You took care of, Microsoft took care of the cloud, right? You know, you made it so powerful, you can scale it, et cetera. But you know, what we see there now, hungry applications are coming into the edge, for example, um, VR and AR, and I'm not talking about metaverse, you know, I'm talking about real work, like people, you know, remote uh, uh, technical support, et cetera. Those will uh, uh, fuel some applications that Sonic can, you know, uh, run the aggregation of those uh, points. You know, IoT is another thing that is going to explode. So, yeah, so we as members of the Sonic will push, you know, edge use cases. Um, you know, I, uh, Surab Kapoor from Dell is not here, but for two weeks I was in his head, in his ear, like, oh, you guys have to do this lower, lower end, you know, like, um, and, you know, so I talked to Broadcom in, uh, in Prague as well. So we are big supporters of uh, this. Well, thank you again for the Sonic community.